What up, what up? Welcome to my new channel. This is Consistent Kennels. My name is J-Rock. Most of you guys probably gonna be watching this video are from my other YouTube channel, J-Rock Talks. I do all types of different content. If you want, go check it out over there. Prison genre. I've been to the penitentiary, got out, changed my life, been off paper, and been living my dream. I just had a baby. <clears throat> I wanted to make a little video today talking about Parvo. Parvo, a lot of people have experienced it. It's a horrible thing. I've experienced it myself. A lot of people don't know, and I just want to get this out there. This isn't a sponsored video in any weens. I wish they would sponsor me. Shit. I wouldn't be fucking... <laughs> These are some paintings I have available. I have multiple acrylics. I can do customs, logos, bully logos, you name it. But um, long story short, the first thing people always, you know, when your dog gets parvo, they're going to be shitting blood or they won't be eating. They're going to be down. That's the first thing you're going to notice. So I'm going to talk about my first experience and we'll go from there. I was like 14 years old. My friend had a little boy. The dog got sick, was perfectly fine the night before. It had eaten food that night around like 630, was playing with us, playing with its chew toy. Everything was fine. We went to sleep. When we woke up, there was blood all over its kennel. The dog had been shitting blood. It stunk. Parvo has a very unique smell. It's a virus. It stinks. It's horrible. And immediately we knew the dog had Parvo. Give the dog Pedialytes. Keeping the dog hydrated is the number one thing to save your dog's life. They can't keep fluids down. The virus is attacking their intestines. They're going to be shitting blood. They're going to be shitting horrible, stinking, loose stool. Normally for, you know, it would be three days and they would die. As soon as they get dehydrated, that's normally what kills them. They can go without food, but they can't go without water. So first thing you want to do if your dog is already shitting blood, even if it's only just a little bit of blood in the diarrhea, make sure that it's not coccidia. We'll get into that. That'll be a different video. But we're talking about once you know it's for sure parvo. It'll be liquidy. There'll normally be a lot of blood. The dog will have no energy. It won't have any interest in food or water. And, you know, take your dog to your vet. But do not, I do not recommend that you get treatment from the veterinarian. If you take your dog to the veterinarian, they're going to give your dog an IV, which they call a camel hump, and they're going to give it, you know, some vitamin D and some liquid in its back, and it's going to have a little camel hump like a camel, and then it's going to go away. Come on, Chloe. And it's going to go away, and it's really going to do nothing. It's not going to be beneficial, and you probably still could lose your animal, and they're going to charge you an arm in your leg. Whereas if you get Paxson, so initially this company, it was called Parvade, and people were saying, oh, you're saying that it prevents Parvo, and... Long story short, they switched it to Paxson. They sell it at food store, um, tractor supply stores, or you can buy it online. I'm pretty sure it was sold at Walmart at one time. It's like $44. It's 100% all natural root supplement. It comes in a little bottle. But anyways, once your puppy has di you know, has a diarrhea, you know the dog has parvo, go to your veterinarian. I don't recommend you just self-diagnose because your dog could have coccidia and they shit blood just the same. Anyways, which coccidia is pretty much like a cousin of parvo. It's a slower type of the virus. They're very similar and they both attack the immune system and the gut and it's all bad. And anyways, come on girls. Pedialyte. Pedialyte, Pedialyte. Give your dog Pedialyte. Give it to them as much as possible. Squirt it down their throat. Be as gentle as you can. Rub the dog's throat. Tip their head back. Put it in the side of their mouth like in their cheek and just give it to them like with a dropper or a baster. Keep the dog hydrated. You can order Parvade, or excuse me, it's called Paxson now. You can order it one day shipping if you don't have a tractor supply store or a feed store that sells, you know, hay and supplements for horses and stuff like that in your area. And Southside Phoenix, they're all over the place. But make sure you keep the dog hydrated. As soon as you get the Parvade, or damn it, man, the Paxson, as soon as you get the Paxson, depending on the weight of your puppy, or dog, normally dog's immune systems are good enough to where they don't get parvo anymore. It's normally a dog under a year that gets parvo. Normally, especially puppies under the age of 12 to 15 weeks get it. Especially in Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, California, where it's warm, the virus does good. It's in poop, flies can transfer it, it's in blood, it's horrible. It's in a lot of kennels. Anyways, you give the dog drops. Say if it was a little Pomeranian puppy, which I have saved with this medicine, a little tiny Pomeranian puppy that was like six and a half weeks. It could literally fit in my hand. So for that dog, it literally got like three drops. And what I do, because it's an oral medicine, you know, in Parvo, they're throwing everything up and they poop everything. I grab like a piece of bread and I smash it to like a little pill to where it's a pill form. And I just put the drops directly on the piece of bread. And then I put it in the dog's mouth and I rub her throat and I make the dog swallow it like that. 
within literally like 18 hours, that dog was already drinking water on its own, which is insane. Smaller breeds normally have a lot harder time. A larger dog can normally pull through. It all depends on the dog. I've heard war stories of people saying they injected their dog with Gatorade and all that bullshit. Don't roll the dice. This shit saves your dog's lives. It saved multiple litters, multiple dogs. Literally, I've never seen one time when someone administered this stuff and the dog, the dog died. Multiple times I own these dogs personally. I had a litter that had Parvo and it was absolutely horrible. If you've never experienced it, it's absolutely insane. If you've ever lost a dog, then you know what I'm talking about. Make sure you keep the dog hydrated. Keep the dog hydrated. Try to keep them clean. They're just going to be laying in one spot and they're going to be hurt and they're going to be bad. Keep hydration, hydration, hydration. With the, with the um, Paxson, you'll dose like the first hour, every single hour until the dog is no longer throwing up or shitting diarrhea. Just read the instructions and then after the dog stops shitting or throwing up, you know, you dose every single hour until the dog stops and then, you know, you start doing it like every three hours. I could be wrong. I haven't had a dog personally that has it in a, little, a while now. So look at the instructions. Make sure you follow the instructions and don't overdose. Some people want to give their dog way more thinking that medicine is going to help them or it's going to save them. Do not do that. Follow the dose for your dog's weight. If you don't know the dog's weight, estimate or you could go to any PetSmart and they have a scale. If you don't want to go to the vet, I recommend you do go to the veterinarian. If you just go and they do the swab and they test your dog's fecal, you could just bring your dog's feces in or they could swab your dog's rectum. Either way. Um, Please save your dog's life. It's not worth it. In the summer, it's the most rampant. In the winter, the virus is a little bit more affected. Um, it's horrible, man. It's fucking horrible. It rips people's lives apart. People buy an expensive puppy from a breeder and they get the dog and then their dog dies of parvo and they try to blame breeders. A lot of the case, you know, new buyers purchase a puppy and they take the dog out to an apartment complex or a park or somewhere where there's multiple other dogs or they let it play with their friend's dogs. When you get a new dog, you have to make sure your dog has all their shots. If you're going to be contacting a breeder and you're going to be spending money on a dog, if you're going to spend, you know, from 2,500 shit, even if you're going to spend a thousand dollars, spend a couple of hundred dollars more to fly out there. Literally if shipping from like New York to California is like only $350 to ship a dog, but the flight, you know, a flight is like probably 280. You could fly out there, meet the breeder, shake his hand, see if you guys vibe. See if his dogs are healthy, see how his dogs are housed, see the puppies, pick which puppy you like, which personality fits your family the most. Dogs are, a, you know, it's not a teddy bear. They're not, you know, these dogs need veterinary care. I check when I sell a puppy, we, we want to make sure they have a home. If they rent, we want to know the landlord knows about it. We have contracts involved. If at any point they can't keep the dog or they're moving or something happens or you know, it, it's aggressive with one of their kids and they don't want to get, they want to get rid of it. We always take the animal back. We have the opportunity to always get the animal back. And if a buyer doesn't want to oblige that and, you know, comprehend that and, you know, then they're not, you know, they can find another kennel. We health test. We try to make sure our dogs are healthy. Already micro French bulldogs, the standard French bulldogs alone have health issues just from being bred the way they are with their noses smashed. You know, they have heart issues. They have breathing issues. I have not bred Momo yet, but when I do go to a stud, I'm going to make sure that he's health tested, has good nostrils, has good structure. We want a dog to be complete. Not only do I want a dog to look great and fit its standard to a T and have exaggerated muscle and be you know, a badass dog, but I want them to be healthy and I want the family that invested in my program and trusted me to be able to have that dog for years and enjoy it. Not the dog overheat in you know, two years or the dog die from a seizure and they have to pay vet bills. You know. It's just not worth it. You know, I don't recommend if you're going to buy a French bulldog, don't ever go to a pet store. Those dogs go, they're normally from puppy mills. They get those dogs way too early. So they look super small and cute. They get them, you know, taken away from their mother at four and a half weeks while they should still be nursing. Be responsible. Research who you're going to get a dog from. I breed micro French bulldogs and XL American bullies. Micro French bulldogs. I have my foundation bitch. Her name is Moana. She's off of Grand Champion Morgan. Um, growler bullies in Arizona. He's an amazing dude, produces quality animals, show dude, family man, quality dogs through and through. His dog Swagger and a female Penelope bred and I got Moana and I couldn't be more thankful. She's amazing. Um, but my main focus and my main, you know, thing is my XL American bully program. My foundation female is Mary Jane. I purchased her from triple threat bullies, a gentleman named Craig Compton. I've raised her for about two and a half years. 
let her have her first couple of heats and mature and enjoy her life. And I bred her to a top stud in the country, one of the largest tri carriers and one of the cleanest, largest dogs I've ever seen structure wise. Amazing head, amazing temperament, tight skin, tight feet, like a ballerina, just perfect example of what an American bully should be, in my opinion. Yeah, is any dog perfect? No, you know, you could tweak any dog, but Tillicum is amazing. My stud that I own, I have one stud dog. His name is Trigger. His name on his paperwork is Golden Boy. My dogs are dual registered through the United Kennel Club and the American Bully Kennel Club. If you guys are interested, check me out on Consistent Kennels. I appreciate you checking out this video. Drop a like. I appreciate you subscribing. Check out my other stuff on J Rock Talks. I go through different types of prison content and how I changed my life, how it is in the penitentiary in AZDOC in Arizona. And, you know, I just had a baby. I changed my life. Dogs are my passion. Check me out. You can DM me or you can drop a comment. I love answering questions. If I can help you out or you have any questions, you know, let me know. Parvo is horrible. I'll eventually talk about Coccidia so you guys know what's up. I'm going to show more of my dogs. And I'll, actually, right now, I'll show you guys a little. Come on, dog. I'll show you guys real quick before I go. I just wanted to drop this. Once I get 1,000 subscribers, I'll be able to go live and talk to you guys. Come on. This is Moana. This is my little Frenchie. I'm trying to show you her structure here. Look, here, let me. Hush, Tiger! My stud's about ready to trip out because he hears me freaking out with them. But this is my little micro French bulldog. She's 18 and a half pounds, 10 inches tall. Sometimes I get nine and a half, but I'll just round it up to 10 to the wither. She's amazing. She's on going to be going on her fourth heat. She's never been bred, but I'm taking her to a top stud recent soon. And I'm going to be doing a raffle for one of her puppies. I'll be talking about that more later. And this is my only pocket female. This is a pocket American bully. She's right under a standard or a classic that they, that's based on height, just like a poodle, they, how they have a toy poodle and a, you know, a giant poodle. It's the same exact thing with the American bully. They have a pocket standard XL. There's different classes. And this is a pocket. When I purchased her, I wanted her to be an XL. I thought she was going to be a little bit taller. She's going to be an amazing tool. My breeding program, she's three and a half years old. She's never been bred yet. As I said, I'm a breeder, not a puppy producer. I'm not a puppy mill. There's a difference between a puppy peddler and someone that's trying to produce quality dogs. Excuse me. Every single time that we do a breeding, it's for my bloodline. I'm trying to keep a male or a female and I'm trying to progress my blood. I want to make sure they have quality homes. I'm not just breeding dogs and selling them to Joe Blow on Craigslist. That's not how we get down. We want them to be in one owner and have an amazing life. These are a companion breed. They can turn up. They can do XL American Bullies, can do personal protection work. I've seen some pockets do it, although most pockets are a little bit more chill. You know, they just want to be on your lap and kick it just like a Frenchie. They're pretty much the exact same mentality. These two love each other. This is Chloe right here. Um, anyways, my other dogs are a lot larger. She has a good head shape. She has great structure and good angularization. And I'm going to end up breeding her into my line eventually. And I think she'll add some girth and, you know, make my dogs. I think it'll be a quality litter, but she hasn't been bred yet. Like I said, we wait for the right time. In the last three years, I've only produced two quality litters, both of them being XL American bullies. I've sold dogs internationally all over the world, Dublin, Ireland, Moscow, Russia, I mean, all over North America, New Hampshire, Texas, New Mexico, um, Maine, New Jersey, um, Pennsylvania. And I'm thankful to every single one that's got a dog. I have a great relationship with every single one of my people. Um, shout out to Titan Bullies out in Florida. He purchased two dogs for me. He has some amazing dogs. He's been blowing up, producing some quality lately. He's got a couple of solid studs. He just purchased Sinister from Pro Bulls. I've been doing my research for a long time before I jumped in. Breeding is not for everybody. If you think it's all puppies and money, you've got another thing coming. This ain't no nine to five, it's a 24 seven. Everything, these dogs, everything comes first. As soon as I wake up, I just had a baby girl. I have to make sure my dogs are fed, exercised, water, everyone's clean, everyone's good. No one swallowed their toy. Exercise everybody, rotate them. They all have personalities, they all need love. I don't believe in just keeping your dog in a crate all day. So many of these people that you might think are a quality breeder just have dogs stacked up in crates and I don't, I don't like that. I don't believe in that. 
All my dogs are family dogs. They all live in my house. All my foundation will die on my yard 100%. It's a reality that I can't keep every puppy, but I do, every time I do breeding, it will be for a reason. I'm not just gonna be clucking my dogs. So people gotta understand your bloodline is like, you know, let's, let's get this way. If it's like a Honda and everybody's got one, your dogs are values gonna go down. My dogs are the Bugatti, the bully world. I keep my dogs, my stud exclusive. I'm only gonna breed the top females. We have a strict, you know, a very strict criteria. I know what I think will click well with him and I don't wanna set anybody up for failure. It's not about the almighty dollar. Anybody that breeds and does it legitimately and is really putting money into their program, you're just gonna break even, literally between health testing, you know, people don't understand. They wonder why these dogs are charged so much, especially the Frenchies. A C-section's from 700 to like $1,200. If it's an emergency, it's more. You got puppy shots, you have multiple vet checks. She has to increase food. We feed top quality food. Then you have to supplement puppy milk if you have a large litter. For the Frenchies, we have a little incubator that literally helps them with their nose and the oxygen. Um, with the bigger dogs, you know, purchasing outdoor kennels, purchasing spring poles, purchasing, you know, bite suits, my kimono bite suit that was just stolen. And this is another thing, do not, if you are a breeder, don't just invite anybody that's just interested in a dog to your home. Meet somebody at the park. Unless they put a deposit or they're purchasing a dog, don't show them your layout. And I recommend cameras, cameras, cameras. Cameras will be all over my home. Somebody just recently broke into my property and stole multiple of my bite suits. $90 puppy pillows, custom collars and harnesses that I had made for my dogs that were over $300, um, multiple bags of dog food. I'm all over social media. I have tons of people on offer up and Craigslist looking. These individuals will get caught. Don't be a thief. Don't be a scumbag. I worked so hard for that stuff. I broke my back to get that shit and these scumbags just stole it. Not only that, they shattered my back window. Thank God there's two panes of glass. My main foundation female, Mary Jane, and her son, Triger, thankfully, were out. And I'm assuming that they seen my dogs and didn't come in. But they kicked in my shed doors that were locked and stole all my shit. So I think it was somebody that knew that I was in the hospital and my daughter was being born. I appreciate you guys' support. Hit that like button. Tell a friend. I'm going to be posting some content, getting some quality, showing you guys my animals. I appreciate you supporting. Big love.